I'm back, and I'm here to scream at drywall and talk about Sea of Claws. And I just finished eating a small family out of house and home. Literally. So for starters, cool as fuck cover art, plus they statted it, so you can fight it. Good shit, Victor Leza. Diving through the book sequentially, the book starts with some lore and a timeline of Sea of Claws history. Good for DMs. Then, we get a bunch of Bretonia Wasteland and Marienburg lore. This includes a table on using the Great Bretonian Lighthouse to navigate. Next up are new rules for different schools of magic on the sea, as well as new spells to quell or make hell out of swells. Whirlpool. Then there's some slightly different, but mostly the same fluff for the major cities on the Nordland coast to what we've seen in the past. I've always felt that Noise Innsprung is a ripe picking ground for DMs to create all sorts of scenarios. Two rival cities, a false bill of goods, sabotage, betrayal, uh, it's got it all. Following that is some juicy lore on Oslin cities, one of which has a deep tie to the knighthood of Manan. The other is beginning to experiment with submarines. This new trait will be very useful for people playing mad engineers. Now for the troll slayers out there, we get some stuff on the troll coast and old throg. Not much, but he's statted and up to some weird shit. A really cool thing about Sea of Claws is it gives us updated lore on Norse Dwarfs, rules on playing as one, Norse Dwarf navy lore and stats, and interesting boat upgrades in Norse ships, and interesting rules for dwarfs at sea. Religious implications. Plus, it has what I think is the very first set of rules for runes in 4th edition? A hint of what's to come, perhaps? Mm -hmm. Now, could it be called Sea of Claws without a section on Norskins? They have a bunch of lore on Norskin raiders and their culture, the oh, Sacred Conch. Rules for making three flavors of Norse character, which sadly don't have that small chance rule from 2nd edition to see if you're like a shape-shifting werewolf. Maybe we'll see it in a future Chaos book. We do, however, get rules of buying wind and pouch from witches. Why? Let it go on your boat and go real fast, or sink yourself. Sea of Claws adds a litany of seafaring classes, but let's be real, you saw this immediately, didn't you? Hooray, up he rises, sir, lie in the morning. Jerk him up, but not too much, not too fast, no, just a touch. Get a maid to jerk him up, or lie in the morning. Yes! Yes! Not only does this book give you sea shanties, it gives you magic sea shanties that give buffs to the ship and the people on it. Now, however, only shantymen of Manan can invoke the power of these shanties. Normal people singing them does nothing. I mean, it sounds good, maybe. For the divine inclined out there, feeling worse for wear with a lack of care, Cubicle 7 has shown divine spellcasters. Well, guess what? Now that Winds of Magic has made wizards so powerful and cool, I see the beginnings of a turnaround. You see, actually, before Winds of Magic, Up in Arms gave us an updated version of priests from Myrmidian priests with new blessings and miracles for war priests of Myrmidia. Sea of Claws has pretty much done the same thing, but for Manon priests, adding tons of cult of Manon lore, beliefs, holy books, magic Himalayan sea salt that frankly has more applications than fucking flex tape when it works, zealots and heretics of Manon, as well as updated miracles for both Manon and Stromfels. It's no tome of salvation, but hey, it's a great start. The main focus of this book, however, the meatus of this book, is boats. You can now build boats, as big as you want, as many as you want. Example boats are listed, great resource for DMs, and there are also few new upgrades, though many are ported over from the Death on the Right campaign. However, they have expanded rules on steam engines, namely malfunctioning steam engines, which is awesome. They also have a little boat character sheet at the back of the book for you to scan and print off. To help fill out the sheet, they've brought back some of the artillery pieces from Up in Arms and added a swivel gun, which frankly seems to be vastly stronger than both small and medium cannons. Is, is that right? Is that cannon cannon in real life? Is that... I'm no, canon under... I'm, I'm no canologist, but can someone please correct me if that's proper? Now, what would be boat rules without rules for sailing on the sea? They've got rules for extended tests for various forms of propulsion, rules for small boats on the big ocean, a new movement chart I should be allowed to show you, guidelines for how often to test boat handling based on weather, tons of new weather to base those tests on and to debuff your players with, various maneuvers and techniques the crew and boat can both pull off, 
Rules for navigation tests so you run the risk of going off course if you don't have a skilled navigator. You'll need a skilled helmsman to navigate the treacherous seas, straits, and shallows. Whirlpool. To tie all of this off with a pretty bow, we have rules on chasing, racing, ramming, damaging, and repairing boats. Even rules for, say, a giant hitting a boat with a giant tree club. So, not only can you play the full pirate life, you could very well actually have an entire campaign about the highly competitive world of old world boat racing. Nice work, Cubicle 7. Rounding out things next, we get a supporting section on crew tests. Things like morale, disease, food and water, and even stat blocks for generic hireling NPC crew members are there. All the things to really fluff out a standard boat ride and turn it into a truly salty and briny sea adventure, fraught with peril and the tense mystery of whether you'll even make it back to land or not. On that note, the next section takes what I said and kicks it up to 11, as it's on extended voyages giving distance guidelines for voyages even as far from Britonia to Erengrad. They don't stop there, however. They have gazettes of ports all over the world, including the colonial raider city of Skeggy and Lustria. Backing that all up, they have new and improved cargo generation tables, updated the rules for trading that come from the Death on the Right Companion, and they even have Endeavors Done at Sea. There's also a bevy of random events to ensure that your journeys are never boring. They even added a whole mechanic to determine how pissed Manan is at you for this. Wait, no, no, the fishermen, they're coming! Ah, Cubicle 7 was trying to warn us, they're so pissed! Ah! No, but seriously, the bestiary is very fantastic and has a lot of totally normal enemies like the Long Drawn Slayers or the leader Clan Scurvy in it. This fucker has 16 fortune points, 3 fate, and 3 resilience. He's going to hit you hard, but he's killable. It's not like there are actually fish people statted and coming to kill us as revenge. Thank you for watching my video. If you would like to support my channel, please stop dumping oil in the ocean and keep dumping more food in there, especially fish flakes. This helps my channel grow. Goodbye.